Hey guys, welcome. Linux Mint 22 Cinnamon Desktop. You can also use this for LMDE 6. I'm filming in 1080, but my screen resolution is in 4K mode. Subscription logo is in the corner. Well over 500 videos on other Linux tips and tricks. Today I'm going to talk about advanced concepts regarding Secure Shell. Our user for today is Hazel. Generally, Hazel is not going to log out of the screen, even performing secure shell commands remotely. I'll show you what I mean by that. There are uh, some commands that um, generally on the top of my head, one of them is top, that I would actually log into the machine and stay logged in until I actually perform the command. But we can also run commands um, using secure shell while not logging out the current user to get data from the other machine. And you'll see what I mean by that in a minute. And in either case, folks, uh, welcome. And I'm not going to clear the screen. I, I'm sorry, and I'm not going to close the terminal box. I'm going to clear the screen. Um, so again, Hazel is just a made up name and that's our user for today. And this is uh, LM22.1 or Linux Mint Cinnamon 22.1. When we use SSH or Secure Shell, we can uh, log into those machines for Linux if we're using OpenSSH server software, either via the public or private keys, public and private keys. We can also uh, just use the regular ED25519s uh, to run the regular security certificates. They're still encrypted no matter what, but on your know, local networks, they're usually easy to set up really without setting up public and private keys. So what I'm going to do is uh, basically I've shown these commands before, but not with this twist on it. I'm going to actually not log Hazel out, but I'm going to run a remote command on a remote machine. And we're going to start with its IP address to find out what the IP address of this remote machine is by using Secure Shell, actually. So um, this is our username and at I can either put the IP address in there or I can use the name of the computer. So since I don't know the IP address, we're going to use that machine there. And that's one of my test machines and I have many. Uh, MX99. Now, if that's in my hosts file, I could also put an entry there with MX99 and its static IP address. But if I don't know that, then I can use .local or I can use its IP address. But to show you this example, it will make more sense to you in a second. I'm going to put a space there and then I'm going to type in the word host name space and the switch dash I. So this video again is made for advanced concepts. But if you're learning SSH, you may want to pay a particular attention to some of these. Hazel is not going to log out. Hazel is going to stay on that terminal box line but I'm going to get the data for this machine, but I still need its password because I'm not using private and public keys. You will not see me type in anything. You can just hear me pounding on my keyboard. So what this command just did, it retrieved the IP address. Actually, there's two of them, version four and six of that machine, and then returned Hazel's prompt without logging into that machine. I ran a remote command to retrieve those numbers. The ones I'm highlighting are IP version 4 numbers. That machine has two network cards. One is wireless and one is Ethernet. Now, when I, you can see Hazel has not been logged out yet. So if I perform a host's host name, sorry, dash I, and it has to be the big I, you can see the IP address of this machine which is 110. I could turn on the wireless on this machine and also show you this also has dual. Let me just do that right now. I'm waiting for it to retrieve an address via wireless and then I'm going to rerun that command. Now it has two IP addresses. Wired, wireless. I'll turn that back off. and then rerun the command back to a single address. So this is the wired IP address. All right, Hazel has not logged out yet. 
as you can as you noticed. Using the upper arrow key on my keyboard, I can repeat these commands. So I will uh, this time use the convenient factor of IP address because I ran this nice little command up here earlier to give me that number right there. So I don't have to guess at it or run to another room to find out if that computer is in a different room or a different floor if it's a small office to find out what the IP address of that machine is. I just did an mx99.local space hostname dash i and it told me what the IP address is. In this case 192.168.1.1 I'm going to put a space after that and type in uptime. What does that command do? It checks to see when that machine was last rebooted or logged into remotely. You will see Hazel will not leave the prompt. Even after it requests a password here, it will retrieve the data and put Hazel right back on the prompt line. The system has been up for 51 minutes. I re remote rebooted it 51 minutes ago, and I'm going to reboot it again a little bit later, and that will return that to zero. Yes, we can do a lot of things remotely using these kind of commands. One of the commands that uh, does not work too well, though, is top. So if I run a top command on the tail end of this, and the way you format this stuff, if you've never done this, it's uh, SSH, which is secure shell, space. Uh, in my case, I'm not using private and public keys, so I need a username that I have on that system, at, in this case, IP address. And then I put in a space and then a command behind it to run a single command. This will not work, even if I put the proper password. And you can see it just puts me right back on the prompt line. How would I run a top on that machine? Well, doing it the old-fashioned way. Log straight into it, which I'm doing right now. Nothing has changed with the passwords. Now I can run the top command. That machine has been up for 52 minutes now. Okay, so if I do a Q and then punch up clear, I'm doing this remotely. Uptime. 52 minutes. Typing in exit to close the connection. Typing in uptime here. 12 minutes. Doing another one of these remotely uptime will not log Hazel out, even after I put the password in here. It will retrieve that information for me. Now it's 53 minutes. It was 52 minutes. Keep in mind, it's, it's still counting. Okay, so at a certain interval, it triggers the next minute, in other words. So this was a local uptime command, which is 12 minutes on this machine, because I just turned it on and started filming. And the other one was done 53 minutes ago. Now I'm going to remote boot it. Yes, I'm going to actually remote boot that machine and still not leave Hazel logged out. This is something that is a little scary to do, and that requires a sudo command to do that with on this machine. And uh, basically, you're going to see when I... I'll probably end up closing the terminal box and reopening it, but I'm issuing a reboot command. So it's still waiting for me to type in a password because that's required, especially for that command. And this one should not be used lightly. It doesn't look like anything's happened here. But if I try to log into that machine regularly, you can see it's hanging. I just hit enter. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to close the terminal box, give it a second. That should be a fairly quick reboot. Reopen that and resize the box, so I'll give you that tip. So it's uh, Control, hold it down, Shift, hold it down, and hit a plus a couple of times right next to your backspace. That'll uh, enlarge the box and everything else with it. All right, now I'm going to repeat that command and type in the word uptime at the same time. So Hazel will not be logged out. Hazel will retrieve the uptime from uh, IP address ending with 116 after 
we give it its password. And then go right back to Hazel's prompt. It's been up for zero minutes. That means that not only did I log into the machine, but it was rebooted less than a minute ago. Let me now continue this uh, little, little uh, tip session. So using the IP address or using mx.local, that part doesn't matter. But there's not every single command can't be run. But you saw me put in the hostname dash I, and it gave me the IP address of that machine. That's very useful in some cases, especially if the machine's not next to you. Um, we can also uh, do, uh, as I pointed, uptime, but we can also check the disk space on that machine remotely without logging Hazel out of the terminal box. And that is a DF command, and I'm gonna use the small h. Uh, I believe there's two different versions of the math calculation on this. So, password required for the remote machine. Hazel is still not logged out. Hazel is still logged in. This is her prompt. And I'll give you a DF-H on this local machine. So the differences are this. This local machine says SDA2. It's a standard solid state drive roughly 200 and some odd gigabytes. It's uh, high usage at 64%. And the remote machine called MX99 is an NVMe, uh, roughly two terabytes at 8%. So the DF command was ran remotely, but Hazel still has not logged out as far as the prompt in the terminal box. You may see some value to this, or maybe not. So if I punch up clear, let's do this on the remote machine. Um, I'm going to do that again, but I'm going to change the small h to a big h, and then I'll give you the definition of what the df command is. <clears throat> so this one's kind of more true to light because that literally is a two terabyte NVMe on that computer. Again, the remote computer, not local. So Hazel went and retrieved MX99's computer's disk information to display it on the screen. Then it went right back to her prompt. So the DF on the local machine, again, would be displayed also this way. They are quite different, as you can see. But the other screen, if you recall, the small h, that percentage hasn't changed. The only thing it changed is the math calculation here. So two terabyte is the size, 135 gig in use. Uh, 1.8 terabyte is available and it's sitting at 8%. Hazel still hasn't left the prompt. If I wanted to log into that system to do this again, regularly, then I would just use that without any commands on the tail end. Now I'm logged into MX99, and the screen is so busy, I'm gonna just do clear and run a DF-H. It's still two terabyte, none of that stuff has changed. But I'm logged into the system, that's the difference. You can see MX99 here, I'm no longer Hazel. When you type in exit, then you're back to your username. Hazel is our user for today. <clears throat> so, whenever you're doing an ls command, for instance, you're doing that locally. When you uh, type in that and do an ls, you are doing that remotely. That's the stuff on the other machine. Hazel started the command and she is still on the same prompt line but she retrieved the information from all the stuff in the main home folder. I even got iPhone photos in that machine. So does my wife. So in addition to using that as a demo machine, I actually back up the iPhone photos and videos. Might as well get some use out of that while playing. 
This is the local machine. The folders are quite different compared to the remote machine. Hazel never logged out of her prompt, as you noticed. This may be a benefit to some, and maybe not so much to others. But again, not all remote commands do work, but quite a few do. Um, I'm going to do um, I, a remote LS, not LS, sorry. Um, I'm going to do a remote, yeah, LS USB, just to check the USB bus on the remote machine called MX99. Okay, password is still required because I'm not using private or public keys. That when I say keys, I mean the security certificates, the encryption security certificates. So that machine right there has absolutely no keyboard, no mice. It has a USB 3 root hub and a USB 2 root hub, and then it has Bluetooth. That's pretty much it for its Bluetooth, uh, sorry, USB stuff. This machine, on the other hand, if I do an LS USB, because again, Hazel still hasn't logged out yet out of her username, this is the local machine. You can see the blue microphone here, the thing I'm talking to you on. I'm using a Logitech Bolt receiver. That Bolt receiver can do both keyboard and mice. I actually control three computers doing that, if you've never seen that kind of system. The Logitech Bolt is a security receiver versus there's a second one for Logitech products also. It's right down here. Bolt receiver. Now you can see what kind of keyboard and mice I have. And they're running at 70% and 80%. This is the information for the local system. Hazel still hasn't logged down to these things, as you can see, but Hazel retrieved the information on the, on the remote machine. And again, it's reporting only three devices in the system, which is the root hub, um, USB 2 and 3, and the Bluetooth thing. And this is the local machine. You may see some benefits to this. You may not. Punching up clear. The other beauty of doing this kind of stuff, if you've never used your history buffer to repeat commands, they're very nice to do that with. If I run another 398, it will reboot the foreign machine. If I just run that uptime 397, how do you do that? Explanation point. Actually, let me punch up clear. Okay, it's 397. We're going to do an uptime. 397. So explanation, 397, enter. It puts on all that stuff in there. All I need is a password. Now that system has been up for eight minutes since I last rebooted it remotely. Again, maybe you see no benefit to this at all, and maybe some see some value to this. Keep in mind, all of these stuff in my history buffer, if you punched it in badly, um, it will also give you the same bad result. But if, you're, um, if your commands are clear and they did work, then repeating the commands are pretty easy to do if they're this long. I'll do a 390. Explanation point 390 will give me the IP address of mx99.local after, again, I put in the password because this is secure shell. Again, same IP addresses, 116.108. Hopefully you found this useful. Thank you for watching.